Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're all having a lovely day. Today I'd like to talk about Raleigh bicycles and why I would never, ever want to own one or give money to this particular company. There's some text on their website that is increasingly disturbing to me. Now, many of you in my comment section have discussed something called the idea of you will own nothing and be happy, and you'll cite the World Economic Forum. Many people will say that this is a conspiracy to ensure that normal people don't have private property anymore, and I've always thought it was something different. I never saw this as a World Economic Forum conspiracy where several people there are ensuring that nobody owns property. I don't think that's the way this is developing. The, what I think is going on is that companies across the world realize that they trade at a higher price to earnings ratio if they have something called the recurring revenue bundle, otherwise known as the rundle, coined by a term that was coined by Scott Galloway, where if you are able to get people to constantly just pay more money each month or consistently uh, pay for a service instead of paying for a product, that you will have a company that is more valuable, even if it makes a similar amount of money. Further, that there are companies out there that will make considerably more money as a result of constant constantly getting you to buy something new. I don't think that there's two or four people pulling the strings to make this happen. I simply think that tens of thousands of companies are all independently coming to the conclusion that if you buy something and you own it and you're done, that they make less money. So the world is moving in that direction, not because of some sort of centrally planned conspiracy, but rather because every single one of these companies realizes this is a way to make more money. Now, regardless of why you believe things are moving in this direction, one thing I think that we can all agree on here is that this is not a direction we want to go in. If you're somebody who watches this channel, you probably value the concept of owning your personal property and being able to choose whether or not you are going to fix it yourself or have somebody else fix it for you. And I guarantee you, if you are watching this channel on a regular basis, you're probably somebody that doesn't like this direction of everything being unfixable and people telling you that you're too stupid to service your own products. So let's go on to Raleigh Electric Bicycles. To be clear, I'm not reading this from some other site or a forum or a news site or a blogger. I'm going to take the word straight from the horse's mouth from raleigh.co slash UK on their electric bike section. They have a page in their knowledge base on electric bike batteries. Now, Electric ba bike batteries are not made of unicorn fairy dust or anything else. They're typically made of the, you know, this pretty much the same general concept of the lithium batteries that go into your cell phone, which, as you know, after a couple of years, will lose their luster and eventually just stop being able to charge or work for more than a few minutes, and just you got to replace it, like many different wear parts. The difference between the brake pads on an electric bicycle or let's or something like let's say the lithium battery, is that you expect the brake pads to die sooner, but it is a wear part. It's not like the frame where you can expect it to last for 10 or 20 or 30 or 50 years. It has a finite life and it is guaranteed to die. When you scroll down and you see when and how do I replace an electric bike battery, it says it's highly unlikely you'll ever need to replace your electric bike battery due to their durability. When your e-bike battery begins to cause you trouble, it's likely time going to be time for an upgrade. Batteries are expensive on their own, and you're best to buy yourself a new bike. If you are concerned about any battery e-bike issues, be sure to register the warranty of your bike online. So one thing I can appreciate here is that they're at very least telling you up front Yo, we're not helping you with this battery shit. Like, no. You, oh, you, oh, you want to know how you service a wear part on the thing that you're paying thousands of dollars for? <laughs> you're probably going to want to buy a new one. Listen, batteries are expensive. You're just best to get yourself another bike. I think at the very least, you can appreciate that they're being honest up front with their intention, which is, yo, we're not. No, you're not fixing that. You're giving us money again for another one. Now, I think this is ridiculous. If you go to a site like EM3EV, e-bike batteries can be expensive or they can be more affordable. Here they show you the difference in quality between the garbage that you'll find on eBay or AliExpress and what they make. This is a company that if you check out their YouTube videos and their website and their posts on forums, they care about customer service. They care about the quality of the batteries they put together. Every bike I've had an EM3EV battery on still works today and I trust them for my batteries. Now, when you check out their sale items, even with the high quality cells and batteries and, and way they put them together, you can get an e-bike battery for 359 bucks. It's not the most powerful thing in the world, 
but it'll do. If you want to get one of the ones with a little bit more power, a little bit nicer case, you can get them for 500 bucks or 600 bucks. I have a couple of these on the bike that I have. They're, it looks like this one's 699. You can get them with different cell configurations, or you can just get one of these shark packs here, which is a little bit cheaper. Admittedly, this, this, this will be fine on an electric bike. You can make a kick-ass electric bike with one of these with decent cells, and it's $459. I've unboxed them on this channel so you can see the way that they ship them, which is amazing. And I have also taken them apart because even though I was considerably outside the warranty period, they were happy to ship me a new BMS and they didn't even bill me for it when I told them that I that my, my one with 30Q cells is going out of bounds. 30Qs were amazing cells at the time. You know, there are better choices now, but they were pretty cool cells when I got it. And those, but they're known for kind of being difficult to, to balance. So they sent me another BMS, which was really, really nice of them, in my opinion. And I took apart the battery so you could see just how well these things are constructed with the foam on every side and the poly fuses everywhere and the liquid resistant. It, it, it's just a beautiful design of these batteries. And again, you know, this is not going to, if you spent 5000 or $6,000 or 3000 bucks on an e-bike, you know, again, just spending like three to 700 bucks to replace the battery after, you know, three or four years, that's a totally normal thing. You're not going to want to just upgrade your effing bike. And again, as I said, even if we, ne we may not always 100% agree on what things like you will own nothing and be happy, like wh who came up with that? And whether or not what's going on is because of a small cabal that came up with it or just every company independently figuring out on their own that this is a great way to milk the American consumer, I guarantee that 99.999% of the people that watch this channel, if they buy a bike in 2022... They are not going to replace that with another bike in 2024 unless it is stolen. They want to keep that bike for five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, just because why would I want to just get rid of this thing that's totally fine, that just needs a replacement battery put on it, simply because you want to charge me more money, simply because you want me to upgrade it. No, you may upgrade your bike. You, maybe some of the people that watch this channel would upgrade every couple of years. But you still expect to keep the old one. Something tells me that my dem demographic of my audience is not an audience of people that just want to toss out their old bike when it's totally fine simply because of the battery and that doesn't want to read this type of condescending bullcrap. This is the type of thing that I really hope I really, really do hope starts to get companies in trouble with their customers to the point where they don't want to give them money anymore. When you say when and how do I replace the electric bike battery, here's the other thing that makes me just absolutely sick here. You have bicycles where they actually take the battery and they'll build it into the frame. So what they'll do is they'll take these 18650 cells and the 18650 cells will literally be inside the frame in a manner that's absolutely miserable, if not close to impossible, for your average end user to replace. But it doesn't even look like that's what they're using here. This battery looks like it's just kind of on top of the bike. And when you take a look at stuff like this, again, this is these shark packs over here, these are incredibly easy. It's literally designed with a little snapping thing so that it just pops out when you click something and then it pops right back in. This is the definition of modular and user replaceable. This is an incredibly easy pack to slide in. There's absolutely no excuse whatsoever to use this type of text on your website. And when you use this type of text on your website, it kind of gives me an idea of what you think of your users and what you think of what your users are expected to do. If somebody's asking how do you replace the battery, what you do is you link them to a knowledge base article that tells them how to slide your battery out and how to slide a replacement battery in, and maybe you recommend where they buy some. And if you want to be recommend they buy them from your own store. Is it that bad? Have a section of the site where you have the battery and then just allow people to buy your battery. So let's, again, even if they took the battery from EM3V, even if they took this battery at 459 and they sold it on their website for a thousand bucks and they just crossed out EM3V and wrote in Raleigh, even that, fine. It's kind of whatever, but I could understand that. You're at least giving people an option. To not give them the option and literally say you have to buy a new bike, that is just dystopian shit. And I don't I, I really hope that like that is not supported. Even Tesla, even Tesla will offer to replace your battery with another one. Now, granted, it may wind up costing you $20,000 on a car that's worth 40, but still, even Tesla will give you the option and let you know how it is that we go about doing this and give you a price rather than this, just buy another vehicle. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know if you think I'm correct. 
or incorrect about the demographic that watches this channel in terms of how long you would want to keep a bike and whether or not you would want to simply snap off and snap on this rather than just, oh, by the, you know, after two or four years, you're going to want a new bike anyway. And let me know what you think of this condescending nonsense where they say that they're very durable as if they're magically using some sort of pixie dust rather than lithium ion like the rest of the world when it comes to e-bike batteries. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I also look forward to meeting somebody in Manchester, New Hampshire over the next few days to talk a little bit about the one wheel stuff and talk shop and learn more and just continue the conversation that I was having with Mario earlier today. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.